Mr. President, what do you say to Democrats worried about the midterms? What do you tell Democrats worried about the midterms? We got a story to tell, just got to tell it. Former President Obama with a simple message for Democrats yesterday during his first time back at the White House since 2017. It comes, as NBC News learns, he plans to play an active role in helping Democrats before the midterms. But he'll follow President Biden's lead. A wave of 23 House Democrats already said they won't run for office again. And several Republican lawmakers who voted to impeach President Trump also leaving, including Michigan Congressman Fred Upton, who announced just yesterday he won't seek re-election. You know, Mika, when we started, uh, when we start talking about the fourth hour, and I'm dead serious here, uh, one of the first things we said is, we need Steve Cornell. Oh, right. Yes, of mm -hmm. course. Well, what, yes. we needed the rage. We, um, we needed him. We, we and, actually and we made a call him. to the front office and, and said, said, we need he, Kornacki. He has to, and, and here yeah. he is. Mm -hmm. Joining us now. hope and love and joy and Data. <laughs> National political correspondent for NBC News and MSNBC, Steve Kornacki. Steve, what's the state of play right now for November? Oh, uh, happy to be a part of the fourth hour. Thank Yay. you for thinking of me. I appreciate it. Well, let's take you through what we can say right now. First of all, I think the big picture thing to keep in mind whenever we're talking about midterm elections is this is the history. I mean, we're going back here to World War II, and these things don't usually start out equal, where wow. either party has a chance to win or lose seats. What you're seeing here is the White House party in every midterm election. This is taking it back to 1942. And look at all that red ink mm -hmm. on there. Those are lost House seats. There's only two exceptions. 2002, right after 9-11, George W. Bush and the Republicans defied history. 1998, that's as Republicans were moving to impeach Bill Clinton. There was a backlash against that. Democrats gain seats than every other midterm election going back. You see there into the 1940s, the opposition parties gain seats. The question has been how many. So it's one thing to keep in mind in terms of the backdrop. Now let's look at more at the modern history and how Biden stands right now politically compared to his recent predecessors, what that's looked at. So if you look at the average approval rating for Joe Biden right now, it sits at 41% right now today. Take a look at this exact same point for his recent predecessors where their approval rating Set. You see that Biden number very, very similar to where Trump was at this point in the 2018 midterm campaign. Obama was a few points higher, although his numbers were on the way down at this point in 2010. Bush, we mentioned post 9-11, very different situation. Bill Clinton was actually at this point in 1994 still at 50 percent. But you take a look at what happened to these presidents in the midterm elections. Again, Clinton and the Democrats took a bath. Joe, I know I don't need to tell you about 1994. Barack Obama and the Democrats. Democrats lost 63 seats mm. in 2010. Wow. We all remember the 40 seat loss for Republicans losing control of the House under Donald Trump uh, in 2018. So again, that's the modern history. You look at that Biden number. It's in line with what's been bad news uh, for the White House party in midterm elections. And again, mm. what Republicans need to get the House here, they gained seats in 2020, even as Trump lost. They only need to get up to 218. So they don't need a tsunami here to get control of the House. The one thing, though, that I do think is interesting and potentially a little bit different and complicating this time around is this. Let's take a look at sort of seats that you would, house seats we're talking here, that you would call the most vulnerable, the ones that the opposition party thinks it has the best chance of picking off. Take a look at this. Right now, we're talking about Democratic-held districts, right? A couple categories here that went for Donald Trump. Right, that's an obvious target for Republicans. They are, the district already voted for Trump. It's Democratic held now. It's an obvious target in a midterm election. There are 10 of those. Okay, if you go to the next level, there are districts the Democrats held where Biden won, but Biden won narrowly, less than five points. There are eight of those. And the next level, Biden won by five to 10 points. There are 15 of those. So you add those all together, there are 33 total seats there, Democratic districts right now. And by the way, the redistricting still playing out. These numbers could change a bit, but 33 total districts that fall into that kind of prime vulnerability category for Democrats. Just compare this to 2018 and take a look. It, it was different back then. The number of Republican held seats that had gone for Hillary Clinton was 25. The number that had gone for Trump by less than five points was 12. The number that had gone by between five and 10 points for Trump was 26. Basically, there were 63 
Republican held seats in 2018 that fall into sort of this prime vulnerability category because of the way redistricting, gerrymandering, all these things we talk about. There's basically half as many right now uh, Democratic seats that fall into that category. So you look at some of those huge numbers we've seen in the past in terms of midterm tsunami losses for mm -hmm. the White House party. One thing that could insulate Democrats somewhat at least is this. It's fascinating to look wow. at the, and the House is expected to swing back, right, toward uh, toward Republicans, but look, let's look at the Senate map. I know you've got a couple races you're looking at. We were talking about Georgia a minute ago. Republicans publicly and privately are very concerned about what's going on there with at least one of their candidates. Yeah, I mean, tr Donald Trump got behind Herschel Walker. Herschel Walker, obviously, legendary name in Georgia sports, but there are some concerns Republicans have been expressing about how he'll hold up as a candidate, but again, looking at a 50-50 Senate right now, you kind of got competitive slash potentially competitive Senate races here. The way I look at it, though, is this. If you're Republicans, your three best offensive targets are Georgia, Arizona, and Nevada. These are three Democratic-held seats, or I think Republicans, at least on paper right now, have their best chance of making gains. You flip that around, and de Democrats, if they want to hold on to the Senate, keep it 50-50, keep having Kamala Harris able to break those ties. I think two things to keep. Pennsylvania is they're clearly best target here, Republican held, but an open seat, state that Joe Biden won in 2020. Huge uh, opportunity there for Democrats. I think the key for Democrats is Wisconsin, Ron Johnson, two-term incumbent. Twice Democrats have gone into the general election thinking they're going to beat Johnson. Twice they've lost. If they could beat him in 2022, I do think that could shift the math in their favor. That's a huge one for them, I think. Wow. All right. He's the best. He is. The right? Best. We, without best. question. He's just the best. And you know, up to see the khakis. I know. <laughs> There's I almost know. a glow I, that comes My daughter. Comes I'm going to take a picture of my daughter. Okay. Okay. Yeah, All right. NBC Can we Steve get your Kornacki. autograph after? She's obsessed <laughs> with him. Yeah, is that exactly. okay to say? No, All right. You can say that. NBC yeah. Steve Kornacki, thank you very Thanks, much. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.